large language models work on vector embeddings. Vector embeddings are the numerical representation of the text on which large language model gets trained or fine-tuned. Large language models only understand these numerical representations and that is where a lot of innovation is happening. One of the innovation is a vector database. Just as traditional databases store structured and at times unstructured data, vector databases store, search and query high dimensional vector embeddings. So again, as I mentioned, embeddings or vector embeddings are numerical representation of data like text images in a high dimensional vector space. And if two pieces of data are similar to each other semantically, then these numerical representation will be stored closer to each other. Now, these vector databases which store these vector embeddings need some mechanism to allow LLMs to access this data rapidly. This is where indexing in vector databases comes very handy. These vector databases provide user-friendly interfaces to interact with embeddings and their associated data. Vector databases use traditional databases behind the scene to store embeddings. For example, Chroma, a quite popular vector database, uses SQLite as in memory store and PG Vector uses Postgres database to store embeddings. Now, the thing which differentiates a vector database from a traditional database is the how indexing works. Indexing is also part and parcel of traditional databases, but the way it is done in vector databases is quite different. In this video, I'm going to introduce you and explain in very simple words what are the indexing techniques in a vector database. Indexing primarily refers to the process of organizing high dimensional vectors in a way that provides efficient curing of nearest neighbor vectors or similar vectors. These indexes work and aim to do the same thing which they do in traditional databases, which is enabling fast and efficient curing of data. And in the context of vector database, that data is high dimensional embedding. There are four common indexing technique these days and as innovation is happening very rapidly this might change or increase the first one is called as flat indexing or linear search algorithm this is a linear search algorithm and it means it will compare the query vector with every other vector stored in the database this is quite simple method and if you have a smaller data set then it will work fine but as the data set grows this really becomes quite impractical because it is not really possible to compare every query vector with every other query vector in the data set and large language models typically work on humongous volume of data second indexing technique is called as ivf or cluster based algorithm ivf or inverted file is a cluster based indexing technique it uses k-means clustering to cluster all the vectors. When a query vector is provided, it calculates the distance between the query vector and the center of each cluster. Then it starts searching for the nearest neighbor in the cluster with center closest to the query vector. Third technique is called as scalar and product quantization or simply quantization. The quantization technique involves reducing the memory footprint of large embeddings by reducing their precision. There is 16-bit, 8-bit, 4-bit, and then there are a lot of other techniques in this quantization. I have a separate video where I discuss this quantization in detail, especially in the context of LoRa and QLoRa. Last and final technique, which is getting quite famous, and it is a de facto and in many times default indexing technique in vector databases it is called as 
एच एन एस डब्ल्यू और हेरार्किकल नेविगेबल स्मॉल वर्ल्ड दिस इंडेक्सिंग टेक्निक इज ग्राफ बेस्ड एंड ऑल्सो द मोस्ट कॉमन वन इट यूज हेरार्किकल ग्राफ आर्किटेक्चर टू इंडेक्स द वैक्टर्स एंड इट इज बींग यूज मोर एंड मोर बाय ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द डेटा बेस विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द मार्केट एट द मोमेंट at a very high level hnsw technique is composed of two further algorithms first is skip list and the other one is navigable small world skip list is based on length list data structure and it is really at the heart of it a simple length list and this is not a new thing this was invented back in 1990s as a faster alternative to linked list now another i mean just to give you more idea on this one a linked list has an o and search time complexity and this is where skip list have an expected time complexity and it performs much better at random access than the linked list and that is why it is being used here in this context now the navigable small world nsw is a graph based algorithm designed for finding approximate nearest neighbors within a data set nsw is a greedy algorithm that starts at a predefined point in the graph and then selects nodes that are closer to the target node the distance between node is typically measured using metrics like euclidean distance of cosine similarity The algorithm continues this process until it reaches the nearest neighbor of the target node and this algorithm is known for its scalability and efficiency and it is suitable for data set data set which are huge but all is not a rosy picture as far as hnsw is concerned the first and foremost issue is that it is quite expensive this entails higher memory footprint because hnsw maintains the hierarchical structure of embeddings which significantly increase increases memory consumption compared to algorithms like nsw and so if your uh, device is resource constrained then it could be an issue then hnsw has various different tunable parameters so if you want to increase the performance you need to be thoroughly aware of how hnsw units parameter work and then tune them accordingly because if you don't tune them properly the performance might suffer again the complexity level is huge so implementing hnsw from scratch can be tricky due to all of these issues so that is why most vector databases don't really allow you to do that and they use trusted pre-built solutions such as FAIWS or HNSWLib in the future videos i'm also going to touch upon these two pre-built solutions and then uh, go from there so that's it guys i hope that you um, enjoyed it and if you have any questions please ask them in the comments and if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel thank you very much